what's up everyone I hope you all are having a wonderful day and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Android natively on your computer well necessarily natively but this theoretically can run on any machine you can install it directly on the machine or you can do what I'm doing in this video and install it in a virtual machine now one thing I'm going to say before this video no this isn't BlueStacks this isn't any sort of emulation it's virtualization which is a difference and please stop asking me to do Pokemon Go hacking videos because I'm not going to. Alright, so the first thing you don't want to do is navigate to this site here, which is the download page for the different versions of Android x86 and get. Now, this project is not officially supported by Google. This is a uh, project by a few people who are basically enthusiasts and tinkerers. So this is not backed by Google in any way, shape, or form. Just keep that in mind. Um, also, there are a couple of versions of Android you can try. They're, they recently started pointing uh, Signage and Mod as well, so that's pretty neat. You know, you can try out the Signage and Mod environment if you wish. Uh, they also have the plain vanilla Android environment, and they also have something called Remix OS, which I'll leave for another day. I'm going to try that out for a different video. But for now, we're going to focus on Android. So pretty much whichever ISO you get, the uh, Android x86 or the Signage and Mod ISO, it, it's pretty straightforward. They both do the same thing in principle. So no matter which one you choose, you'll be able to follow this video anyways. So uh, one thing you do need to know, depending on your processor, it depends on which uh, image you should download. So for instance, if you have a 32-bit processor, you're going to download the x86 version. If you have a 64-bit processor and a 64-bit install of Windows, you're going to download the x86 64 edition. Now, you can also run these natively on a computer, so that means you don't need any sort of virtualization software. You can literally install this on an old laptop if you really wish to. And that's the really cool thing about this, is that it'll run on anything, you know. You don't need BlueStacks, you don't need a copy of Windows, it'll run just as is. So, I've already downloaded the image for the Android and the Signage Mod one, but we're going to be using the Android one for the time being. I did try this in VMware, but for some reason after the install, I have a very weird glitch where the video driver doesn't load in properly, so I'm going to be using VirtualBox for this video, and I'd recommend you do the same as well. VirtualBox is a free virtualization software, you don't need to pay anything for it. Uh, I'll have a link in the description as well, it's very straightforward to install, you just download the installer, run it, and install it, it's very simple. So we're going to hit new virtual machine, and for the type we're going to choose other, and we're going to do, oh sorry, I mean Linux, and then we're going to choose other Linux, 64 bit. And for the name, we'll just call it Android, like so. And we'll go next. Uh, the amount of RAM, I'll give about a gig of RAM because I have about 16. So we're going to do 1024. So we're gonna hit next. Uh, we're going to create a new hard disk. Uh, yes, we'll just do next. Uh, dynamically allocated, which basically means it won't uh, make the full size, it'll expand as you use storage on it. So that's very good for saving space. Uh, we'll give it about, I'd say, 16 gigs of hard drive space. We don't really need to give it a lot. If you want to give it more, that's up to you. So we're going to hit create. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit settings. And we're going to go down to storage here. And we're going to select an ISO. Now as you can see, I've already had selected the images before when I was testing this before this video. So what you would want to do, you're not going to see these. You're going to click choose virtual optical disk file. And you're going to scroll down until you see your disk images that you've downloaded. In this case, Android x86. Now, uh, what's this about? Remote display is enabled for virtual machine. However, the pack needs to be installed. Oh, we can ignore that. Uh, if you want to get rid of that error, you could just go ahead and turn this off. But as you can see, now that you've selected your image, that's pretty much it. Uh, it also, for whatever reason, if you want to change any of the settings, you can always come back here and change it as well. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it more cores. So uh, just give it about two cores just so I could speed it up a little bit. This is something that's pretty cool, by the way, with virtualization that you cannot do with uh, BlueStacks. Is you can emulate more cores and, st and give it more memory. And you can adjust all those kinds of settings that you normally would not be able to do with uh, BlueStacks. And that's what's so beneficial about this, is that it's very straightforward and, you know, it's easy to do. Once you try it, once you understand how to do virtualization, it's not that hard. You can also do this for anything else. So we're going to hit start here. It'll take a few seconds to load up. Oh, it came up on the wrong screen here. So let me just drag that over here. And we're going to close out of this. And we're going to basically go inst we'll scroll down and go to install to hard disk. Use the arrow keys to go down, by the way. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to select create and modify partitions. Uh, we're going to hit no on GPT. So I'm going to create a new partition. We're going to create primary because it's the first partition on the hard drive. Uh, we're going to leave the size as is. And next thing we're going to do is going to make it bootable. And we're also going to go down until we see this right option here. We're going to hit right. And then we're going to type in yes to confirm. Like so. Also, by the way, I was using the arrow keys and enter to select. So in case you didn't know. And now we're going to go to quit. Like so. And now you see the virtual box hard disk comes up there. We're going to select that. Uh, you could choose whatever format you want. It Most likely Android uses EXT because it's a Linux uh, operating system. So I'm going to go with EXT for the sake of simplicity. But for whatever reason, if you want to transfer files between the, the virtual hard disk and such, you can use NTFS or FAT32, whatever your heart desires. So I'm going to go with EXT for the sake of simplicity. Uh, yes, we're going to format this hard disk. This should take a few seconds. Uh, yes, we should install the bootloader. Uh, we'll skip that. Uh, do you want to install the system as read write? I'm going to hit no, but if you want to be able to edit the files on the system by, you know, whatever means, you'll still be able to uh, by using root. But for whatever reason, if you want to make it read write, you can. It does take a bit more hard drive space to install and a little bit longer, but I'm going to hit no. All right, so now that the Android uh, has finished installing, we're going to hit reboot. But before we do that, uh, let's hit the right control key here to get the mouse out. And we're just going to eject this disk. So we're going to go remove disk from virtual drive, uh, force unmount. And now we're just going to hit reboot. All right, as you can see, now we're in the grid bootloader. We'll mostly only need the first option. The other options are for debugging if for whatever reason something goes wrong. So we'll just select the first option and hit enter. Uh, let me close this message box on the top of the screen here. As you can see, it's booting like so. It'll take a little bit to boot. Because it's also the first boot, it's going to take a few minutes to set itself up. Alright, so as you can see, we made it into the setup. Now we should get a cursor. Oh, okay, so this is a bit weird. Alright, so we're going to eject the mouse. Now I noticed something weird with uh, VirtualBox as well, is that we need to disable mouse pointer integration, which I believe is this thing here. We're going to uh, click on that and uncheck mouse integration. Now what mouse integration is, is basically it allows you to move the mouse in and out with, of the window without needing to press right control. Now for some reason, I don't know if you guys noticed, but let me show you again. Like right now you see I have a cursor, right? But for some reason, if I enable uh, pointer integration, it shows it as if I was using a touchscreen and I have to click and drag in order for the pointer to move anywhere. So it thinks I'm using a touchscreen. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's an easy workaround. Maybe it'll be fixed in another revision. So we'll close out of the emoji keyboard. I don't know why that opened. So I'm going to click on next. Alright, we can skip Wi-Fi networks because this is a virtual machine after all. I don't need to set up a wireless network. Uh, hit skip anyways. Alright, so it's going to check the Ethernet connection. Uh, I'm not going to copy any of my apps. I'll do that later on. But if you want, you can click copy and it'll ask you to sign in with your Google account. And then, you, you know, the rest is pretty much straightforward. But I'm not going to do that. I just want this for testing reasons, and I don't want to use it as a device. So we're going to hit next. Uh, I'm going to skip putting in my email for now. Yes. But if uh, you can put in your email if you wish. Uh, yes, that's, that's about right. I'm in the Eastern Time Zone. So we hit next. Uh, first name and last name, I'll leave that as blank. Uh, not now. Uh, this stuff you can check on your own. I'm going to disable all these because it's a virtual machine. It's not going to need location services. So we're going to hit next. And there you go. Now it gives you an option here. I'm going to hit got it so that way they can use the information to kind of help them improve the Android port, but yeah, uh, you can pull down your mouse here, and as you can see, you got the notification center like it's an Android. Now, here's the benefit of this over BlueStacks. 
Bluestacks is Android in essence, yes, but it's a very slimmed down version of Android and it's only made to be used for emulation, it's not really made for anything else. With this, you can use it to test your apps as if you were running native Android, like if you were running it on your phone. And you can also use this for testing it on Intel based phones as well since it's Android running natively on an Intel CPU. It doesn't need any sort of emulation software to do so. So it's great for debugging. It's much faster than Bluestacks. Uh, it's a little bit buggy, but you know, it's still Android nonetheless, and a lot of the stuff still works. So for instance, I can go in the settings menu right now and things like that. I can also, let's see if we have the YouTube app installed. I, I believe sound does work. So let's open this up and look for a song or something. Uh, we'll install the update later. Alright, so in this scene here, you see me switching the audio driver to Intel HD. Uh, before I tried both the i whatever it was, and then also the Sound Blaster 16 driver, which didn't seem to work, so I boot up the thing back here. And so basically, if you want the audio to work, you just need to change it to the Intel driver, and that seemed to do the trick. That, well, that's pretty much it. There's also one more thing I'm going to show you guys, which uh, I'll need to turn out, turn off this thing to do that, which... Uh, how do I do that here? Uh, ACPI shutdown. We'll hit power off. So we're going to let it shut down, and I'll show you guys a neat little trick as well, because I forgot to show you this back in the beginning of the video. Alright, so now that it's, shut, uh, it's fully turned off, we're going to go into the settings menu. Um, we're going to go under networks. Now... Uh, for whatever reason, if you want your div uh, virtual Android machine to communicate with your network as if it was on that network physically, uh, we're gonna you can do a bridged adapter, which will allow it to communicate with your network. So, for instance, it's like let's say you have a server and you want your Android device to talk to the server, this will allow it to do that. But if you want it to only go through your PC and use your PC's internet connection, then you can choose NAT, which will have it separate from the network. But I'm going to choose bridged for this example. And, you know, pretty much you can now talk to anything. Like, if I launch my uh, Android machine again here, and I'll cut to when I get back into the desktop here. Alright, so, oh, wait, I gotta disable pointer integration again. Hang on a second. There we go. So now, if I go into the browser here, I should be able to pull up an address of one of my servers. So, for instance, I can pull up the address of my FreeNAS machine. So if I do 192.168.1.65, as you can see, there's the address of my FreeNAS machine, and it asks me for the login. And that's pretty much it I wanted to show you guys. I hope you found this video useful. I hope this helped you out in some way, shape, or form. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Until then, have a great day. All right, kick back, relax, and grab yourself a beverage. A hop if you want to just pass to my leverage. The evidence, as they say, is in the pudding. So show me the money like my name is Cuba Gooding. It ain't fool's gold, it's gold, fool. Can't stop, won't stop, keeping it old school. So cool. Big spoon is my nom's a plume. I keep it popping like a needle in a new balloon. And if you don't know by now, then you need more schooling. Let loose, kid. Get Stupid. Got more flavor than I know what to do with So get your hands up if you're part of the movement And bump to the bump to the baseline I made it right before your phone had FaceTime Yes, sirree, you know my steez I stay fresh to death like I'm drowning in Febreze Up, up